This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to look at using disk images. We're going to start by creating one in Disk Utility. I'm going to use the File, then the New Disk Image from Folder. And the folder that we're going to create as a disk image is in Users, Shared, and it's our training folder. So I'm going to select that as the image. The name defaults to the same as the folder. I want this to be stored on my desktop. I do want it to be compressed. I don't want it to be encrypted. And I click Save. And since we don't have a huge amount of information, it should happen fairly quickly. I did have to authenticate as my local admin, and it is done. Note that it automatically puts the training.dmg as one of the disk images listed in my disk utility. And it's here on the desktop. If we double click on it, most Mac users are going to be familiar with this behavior. It just mounts as if it was an external drive and becomes available for us. The default settings were to make it compressed. I chose that, and that means it's read-only. So let's close this, and we will eject that image. Now let's make a blank disk image. For this, I'm going to go up to the File menu, say New Blank Disk Image. I could have also said Option Command N. We'll call this something like 1 gig. I'm going to put it on my desktop. Call the name of it mounted, also 1 gig. And then I want to choose a custom size. I think you can guess what I want. I want to switch that to gigabytes and one as the size. We don't want to encrypt it. Partitions, we can change to GUID partition map. It's not necessary, but if you like to keep things somewhat uniform, that's a good idea. And then we want this to be a sparse disk image rather than just read and write. That way, it will only take up a little bit of space at first, and it will grow as necessary. Okay, so now we have this one gig image. It thinks it's 991.6 megabytes available. We know that to be a fiction because the actual sparse image only takes up 50.3 megabytes of space on the hard drive. So let's put some files in there. I'll go into my Documents folder, and I have a movie that is about 300-some megabytes in size. It's 365.4 megabytes. Note that the size of the sparse image is changing dynamically as the information is copied in there. And now we'll open up this disk image again. There's the sample movie. What happens if we delete it out of there? Will our sparse image shrink in size? And the answer is no. Even after we empty the trash, the answer is still no. It's still taking up that space on our hard drive. So we'll get to how to fix that in a little while. But it's nice to know that you could create a disk image that gets bigger as it needs to and doesn't immediately take up all the space on the hard drive. So I'm going to eject that one gig drive. And notice, still using the 403.7 megabytes. So there's another trick that I need to show you. And to do that, we need to switch out of using the disk utility into using terminal. And I want to change directory over to my users shared. And then we can take our training folder. And I just want to show you how we could use hdiutil, a new command for you, in the terminal to create a disk image. We can say source folder. And then we give it the path to the source folder, which in this case is in our same directory. So we don't really need to do much about that. And then we need to give it a name. And it will take it a moment or two. We have to authenticate. And now if we look in the finder, we have a training disk image in our shared folder right next to our training folder. It is the same, essentially, as this one we created earlier using Disk Utility. Okay, so using HDIUtil, we can create disk images. We can also 
get information about them by typing HDIUtil image info and then typing in or dragging in, in this case, the name of the disk image we want to get information about. So that gave us a whole bunch of information. I'm going to scroll up here in the terminal and we can see that this is a sparse disk image. It has not been checksummed. We can see how much space is in use, whether they're compressed or not, and on down here through the rest of the information. HDI util can also be used in cases like this to compact or free up space in sparse disk images. And now it tells us we reclaimed 349 megabytes. If we look over here, sure enough, the sparse disk image is down to 37.8 megabytes. So that is a very nice feature. You do have to use HDI util from the command line to do that. But if you are going to be using sparse images, that's the way to go. Every once in a while, compact them to free up your hard drive space. All right, I want to introduce another feature of HDI Util, but it's not exclusively HDI Util's feature, but we're going to introduce it here. There is a verify command, and this is useful for images that have been checksummed, say, like the security image that we downloaded from Apple. This is not going to prove to us that this came from Apple, but it's going to prove to us that we didn't lose any data. It will go through and verify and checksum that disk and compare it to its internal checksums. Let's see what this looks like when we use disk utility. We can drag in our disk image into disk utility, highlight it, click on the little microscope icon which says verify, and it does essentially the same thing that we just did in the command line. Okay. Again, that doesn't prove that the file came from Apple, but it proves that the file is internally consistent. So how would we prove that this came from Apple? Well, remember that Apple, when it provides you a security update, also provides you a hash or a digest or a checksum, depending upon what you want to call it. So you can take that information and compare it to your own calculated checksum. And the way we do that is to type open SSL SHA1 and then give it the path and name of the file. Press return. And again, it seems to be my day for typos here. The SHA1 is lowercase. There it goes. Okay, so that value, although it's hard to see, does compare to the value that we have from the Apple website. And I'm going to just use the echo command here and paste in what we got. And it is easy to compare them now that they're both on the same relative screen. To explore more on your own, bring up the man page for HDI Util. It reads like a book. There is a lot of information here. There's examples down at the very bottom. But it has many, many features. You can create other types of disk images. You can convert between types of disk images. The sparse disk image in particular is useful when you want to add things to it over time and grow it in size and then convert it, say, to a read-only image and deploy it out to your users. There is a HDI util command called Internet Enable. And if you want to give your fellow Mac users a disk image that they can download straight into Safari and have it open itself up and extract all the information out of it right away, that's the way you can do that. And again, disk images are best when used from one Mac user to another. They don't work too well when we try to cross to other operating systems.